They had come to the far edge of the Great Plains in search of a new beginning, in the last place in America where a family could claim a homestead and build a future. A sea of grass, once the domain of Indians and buffalo, disappeared beneath the blade of a plow. But then, it was as if the land rejected them. The rains stopped and the winds came. We were just too selfish and we were trying to make money and it didn't work out. This was a 10-year apocalypse that I don't think we can fully appreciate because we tend to pigeonhole stuff in American history and say, oh, this is the grapes of wrath, you know, boom, done. It's much more complicated than that. And the story of the human beings that survived this 10-year apocalypse is one of the most moving and one of the most dramatic stories I think we've ever come across. And they were just incredible stories, both in terms of an environmental story, of human folly, but also of human courage and suffering and perseverance. People have simply assumed it couldn't happen again. We know that it's possible to turn from savanna to a stark desert. And there's no reason to think that uh, it can't happen in the middle of North America. Yeah, there's every indication, Jenna, that this drought affecting the Midwestern states right now could be the worst in 50 years. I mean, the, the most basic lesson was be humble. Respect the land itself. Listen to what it's trying to tell you. If, if the wind blows 60, 70 miles an hour for 50% of the year, there's a reason why only one thing is growing there, and it's native grass. Don't try to put things in place there that don't belong there. Listen to the land itself. If the things we're doing are going to mess up the future, it wasn't a good idea. Don't deal on the moment. Take the long-term look at things. This dusty, barren land had given all it could yield. 